June of 2023 saw the fifth iteration of the AI in Games Summer School, an event that bears no relation to this channel but does carry some history with yours truly. I was invited down to take part at the event, hosted at Microsoft Research in Cambridge here in the UK, and help host a panel, as well as generally just come down and check out the talks and be a bit of a professional nuisance. It wound up I did more than that before the week was out. So hey, I'm Tommy, this is AI in Games Plus, and let's vlog this thing and share my experiences of being at the summer school for 2023. Hosted by Drs. Yergos Yanakakis and Julian Tegelius, two of the most prominent academic researchers in AI for Games, the Summer School aims to be a week-long event that helps bring people up to speed on many of the AI tools and techniques that are emerging in and around games. Given the team's academic focus and background, the subjects covered tend to lean more towards more academic and research-focused techniques, as well as many of the current innovations surrounding deep learning and large language models. As such, it sits in a different space from the likes of, say, the AI Summit at GDC, which I vlogged about earlier this year, which is all about what AI tools and technologies game developers are using now for their productions. The summer school is less focused on what's being employed in industry today, but more on what could become the techniques of the future, with many of the introductory lectures on specific topics, be it AI for gameplay agents, procedural content generation and player modelling, leaning towards concepts that have been applied to great success in academic research but perhaps not all of it yet released in commercial games. But all that said, that doesn't mean this is an event that is exclusively of interest for people in research labs, given there's a strong emphasis on inviting speakers from industry to come along and highlight some of the work they are doing, either in a R&D capacity or in commercial titles. And off the top of my head, there were speakers not just from the hosts, Microsoft Research, but also Sony Interactive Entertainment, Riot Games, Creative Assembly, Square Enix, Google DeepMind, Nvidia, Good AI, and many more. So hang on, what am I doing here? Surely I already know a thing or two about AI for games, and I don't need to go to summer school. Well, yes, but it's always good to learn from the community around us. You know, stay hungry and stay humble, kids. But actually, there's another side to all of this. Jorgos and Julian are old research buddies of mine, and I've been lucky to count them as friends for almost 15 years at this point. So I was there both to do a solid and host a panel, but also to help out with some other aspects too. So yeah, let's discuss the setup. As attendees for the summer school made their way from all over the world to Cambridge for the first three days, the opening two days start with a lot of research overviews from Georgios and Julian on key approaches for employing AI in games in a myriad of ways. As stated, these tend to lean more towards research techniques, but many of which have since made their way into commercial projects. In the first two days, the latter half of each was focused on more ongoing research ideas, as well as a couple of industry applications, Meanwhile, the Wednesday was almost exclusively game studios talking about what they're actually doing in this space. Having the talks break down like this is really useful, given it allows for you to see what the state of the art is in research and how this is sometimes practical or otherwise in an industrial setting. But outside of this direct comparison, one of the highlights of having these two sides of the coin at the same event is exposing the type of problems in industry that are being solved versus what's happening in academia. A lot of deep learning and generative AI technologies have the potential to be employed in game productions, but often the reality is that it's not possible to make this happen overnight, a point I raised in my recent episode of Artifacts not that long ago on the main channel. Hence, many of the speakers are discussing the things they're looking into, what they think they could start solving in the coming years, and what are still very far away. Or in the case of Oscar Stahlberg, who you may remember from my episode on the main channel about Townscaper last year, it's about how existing techniques can be reframed in specific ways to become incredibly useful for very specific tasks. It's also a useful way to communicate sometimes just how far the divide is from a research idea being employed effectively in an industry context. My AI Summit colleague Dugu Chakmak, the R&D Tech Director for Creative Assembly, talked about how the current generation of AI systems works in total war and how a lot of machine learning and deep learning advances just aren't useful for what they're trying to do. And this is, of course, a studio that is very keen to experiment and explore new techniques where plausible, as my numerous videos on their games have highlighted. Meanwhile, Wesley Kerr, the technical director of research for Riot Games, discussed not only how a lot of deep learning is now being employed in parts of Riot's game production pipeline, as well as their R&D areas, but also how they're exploring safe and practical ways they could use generative AI, such as training large language models for use inside the studio, but not on the actual games themselves. Meanwhile, Marek Rosa, the CEO of Good AI, who most people will know as one of the creators of Space Engineers, 
showcase the work his team is doing in creating a Sims-like game where not just the dialogue but characters and their actions are governed entirely by large language models. The answer is yes, it is cool, but no, LLMs cannot do this entirely on their own and needing some extra game AI tech to glue it together. And it would also be so damn expensive to run against GPT in its current form that they would bankrupt the company if they actually released it as a commercial game. And of course, in amongst all of this, I held a panel with Oscar, Dugu, Wes and Katja Hoffman, who is one of the leads on machine learning for games at Microsoft Research and has led some of the Minecraft related research projects that Microsoft have explored in recent years. It was a fun conversation and I'm happy to say that not only did we record it, my plan is to launch it soon as an episode of the Branching Factor podcast. So yeah, keep your eyes and ears peeled for that one. All of these industrial talks were then wrapped up by a wonderful presentation by Yoichiro Miyake, the manager of the Square Enix AI division. Miyake-san was the AI lead on Final Fantasy XV and has also been involved in games such as Kingdom Hearts 4 and even Demon's Souls. It was a fun talk as it highlighted the big shifts in AI for games in the industry over the past 20 to 30 years. It's the sort of talk I would possibly be invited to give at an event like this, but for me what was so rewarding was that it was delivered from the perspective of the Japanese games industry. While it did highlight some Western titles, it was also pointing out how certain Japanese games have achieved their design goals. Given we seldom see much of the inner workings of Japanese games here in the West, it was, for me at least, an absolute treat. I learned a whole bunch of new stuff and I'm even trying to figure out how I could conceivably turn it into a video somewhere down the line. And now in amongst all of this, while there are still some talks on the Thursday morning on day 4, the last two days are dedicated to the Game Jam, in which the attendees are welcome to go ahead and participate in making whatever they can within a roughly 30 hour window. This is coordinated by my friends David Melhart, who is the secret glue that really holds the whole summer school together and Antonius Leapis, both from the University of Malta. Sadly, one of the team actually turned ill and it wound up I came in and helped out a little bit at the game jam, just helping give advice, keep the peace and also be a resident adult in the room, which is hilarious. I mean, me, you know, an adult, responsible. Huh. It was interesting to see the types of projects being thrown together. Amusingly, a lot of the games adopted GPT into their games somehow. I think Marek Rosa's talk on their Sim-style GPT game just rubbed off on everyone. But the range of games made was still pretty funny. We had Charmageddon, where players had to converse with GPT bots and convince them to join their side. Darwin's Vanguard, where neuroevolution is used for tower defence games. Madio, a clone of Super Mario Bros. that you controlled using your voice and body movements. And Coffee in July, a game where the player avatar used GPT to then write tweets about how miserable their day had been based on how well the player performed in the game, and then even allowing you to follow the bot on Twitter and then send it good vibes which it would then subsequently respond to. On that note, a shout out and congratulations to the winning game, Face to Face, a two player game where players had to match certain facial expressions shown on screen using emojis, using OpenCV for facial recognition and trained deep learning models for emotion detection. This was my first time at the summer school, and even as someone who's been around the block a few times and knows a thing or two about a thing or two when it comes to AI for games, it's always great to attend events like this and absorb as much knowledge as you can. Especially for someone in my position, we're trying to keep up with the big breakthroughs or trends in academic research as an ongoing challenge. I mean, it was a challenge before, never mind now. So I naturally made a whole bunch of notes and some talks, and hopefully we can find a way to get this into video form sometime in the future. Outside of that, it's also nice as a social event to catch up with a lot of people and meet new folk as well. Given we're still feeling the ramifications of Covid, there are still many people from our community that I simply have not seen in person now for several years. Even our wonderful summer school hosts, whether it was Julian, Yargos and Microsoft Research's Sam Devlin, these were all people I'd not seen in person in around four years, which prior to the pandemic would have sounded crazy to me. But of course, the exciting thing is to meet all the new people joining our community. A wonderfully talented bunch of individuals from all corners of the globe in attendance, all of whom working on interesting things in their own right. Some are game developers in the industry, some of them are grad students, others PhD candidates. A horribly talented bunch. And they're all super nice too. God, can't find anything nasty to say about them. In addition, it was nice to see their range of responses to me and what I do. Given the organisers know who I am, they're happy to acknowledge me as, you know, that YouTuber guy. Which is, of course, meant as a bit of fun. Many of the attendees know who I am, while many also don't. And that then led to some fun moments. 
trying to explain to some people what I do and why I do it, while others asked me specifics about video projects and the like. It was also very edifying to discover we had attendees from the likes of Africa and South America who told me they watch episodes and share them within their respective games programs, classes or communities. It is, as always, incredibly humbling to find out that people watch the videos this far removed from me and still find value in my dumbass ramblings here in my spare room. So yeah, all in all, this video is really all about highlighting what a week at the summer school is all about. And for some of you out there, this might be something you're interested in attending yourself, but perhaps you've not made the commitment or you're still unsure as to whether this is worth aiming for. It's still a relatively small event, but it appears to be quite satisfying for many of the folks in attendance, if anything just to network with one another, and of course to meet all the speakers too. It was a pleasure to be in attendance and to meet folks old and new and just be a part of it all, be it as a panel moderator, an interim game jam organiser, or just a professional idiot wandering around having a chat. And I want to take a moment to thank the organisers for having me come along and take part. And with that, let's wrap up this video. I hope you found it interesting. And for those of you who are perhaps keen on participating in a future summer school, I'll leave you a bunch of information in the video description. And with that, I'll sign off. Take care of yourselves. And I'll be back. <laughs>